Hi, today we're looking at section 2.4, which is reciprocals of quadratic functions. Essentially, our steps for graphing reciprocals of quadratic functions are the exact same as with linear functions. However, we can have 0, 1, or 2 asymptotes. So a reminder from the last section we dealt with, we ended up with an asymptote everywhere where a general function crossed the x-axis. So because our parabolas may not cross x-axis, that give us zero asymptotes. If a vertex is on the x-axis, that gives us one asymptote. Or if it has two x-intercepts, it will have two asymptotes. So our first example is find the reciprocal of y equals x minus 1 squared plus 2 and then graph. So reciprocal of this would just be y is equal to 1 over x minus 1 squared plus 2. So now we will graph that and we'll also graph the original function. So we'll do a three column table of values. So I have x, we'll start with the original graph of y equals x minus one squared plus two. Now we know from looking at this, it's in vertex form, so our vertex is one comma two. So do a few points that are lower than that and a few points above that. Okay, so we have negative two minus one is negative three, negative three squared is nine. Plus two would be 11. Then we have negative one minus one, which would be negative two, negative two squared is four, plus two is six. Next we have zero, zero minus one, is negative one. Next we have zero, so zero minus one is negative one, negative one squared is one, plus two is three. Next we have two, two minus one is one, one squared is one, plus two is three. Then three minus one is two, two squared is four, plus two is six. Then we have four minus one is three. Three squared is nine plus two is 11. So at negative two, we are at positive 11. Negative one, we're at six. Zero, we're at three. One, we're at two. Two, we're at three. Three, we're at six. Four, we're at 11. So this would be our original graph of y is equal to x minus 1 squared plus 2. Now to do our reciprocal function, we will just do what we did in the last section. And just take the reciprocal of each of these. So at negative 2, we're at 1 11th. Negative 1, we're at 1 sixth. 0, we're at 1 third. 1, we're at 1 half. At 2, we're at 1 third. 3, we're at 1 sixth. 4, we're at 1 eleventh. Now, in this case, this never crossed our x-axis, so we don't have any x-intercepts. Which means we're not going to have an asymptote. So plotting these at negative 2, we're at 1 eleventh, so pretty much almost right on that axis. Then at negative one, we're at one sixth. Then at zero, we're at one third. Then we're at one half, then one third, then one sixth, then one eleventh. So you can see where the vertex is, our graph of our reciprocal comes upwards slightly, but this graph mostly follows our x-axis.
Okay, so we'll do another example. Graph y equals one over x plus two squared minus three. So this one, even though they gave us purely a reciprocal function, I will graph our original and the reciprocal to make things easier to see connections as well as sometimes it's easier for graphing as well. So my original function would have been y is equal to x plus two squared minus three. So if I have a vertex at negative two, negative three. So I'll do a few points less than that and a few more than that. Okay, so first one, we've got negative five plus two is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. 9 minus 3 is 6. Next, we have negative 4 plus 2, which would be negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, minus 3 is 1. Next, we have negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. Next, we have negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus 3 is negative 2. Then we've got 0. So 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Minus 3 is 1. Then we have 1 plus 2 is 3, which squaring gives us 9. Minus 3 is 6. So we'll plot these. So at negative 5, we're at 6. Negative four, we're at one. Negative three, we're at ne negative two. Negative two, we're at negative three. Negative one, we're at negative two. Zero, we're at one. One, we're at six. So our original graph would look something like this. So if this was our y equals x plus two squared minus three. Now we will do our reciprocal function. So we've got y equals one over x plus two squared minus three. So six becomes one sixth. One is an invariant point. Reciprocal of it just gives us one. Negative two becomes negative one half. Negative three becomes negative one third. Negative two becomes negative one half. One is another invariant point. 6 becomes 1 sixth. Now, before plotting these points, we should put in our asymptotes. So we know our asymptotes are where our graph crossed the x-axis, or original graph crossed the x-axis. So we can see we have an asymptote here. So for benefit of Drawing our original function is we can see exactly where these asymptotes should be. So once again, for where original function crossed the x-axis. Okay, so now we'll plot our reciprocal. So negative five, we're at one sixth. Then we're at this invariant point. So we're going to be coming along this axis, going through that point and that point and then upwards. Then at negative three, we're at negative one half. Then we're at negative one third, then negative one half. We can see that this is curving this way. So essentially we are coming down this asymptote, curving through these points, and then going down from that asymptote. Then at zero, we are at invariant point of one, then we're at one six. So we can see that our general shape would be something like this. So we can see we had our two asymptotes because we crossed our axis twice. So we've now looked at one where we've 
cross our axis our x axis twice, one where we didn't cross it. So we'll just quickly go over what it will look like if we just have it touch once. So if it touches once, so in other words, our vertex is on our x axis. What it would look like is here's our original function. Where it touches would be our vertical asymptote. And then when we take the reciprocal of our y values here, what we'll end up with is something that looks like this. So because our original function, all y values were positive, our new function, all y values had to be positive, which is why this graph is above our x-axis. If it's open downwards, then this would just be mirrored over this axis.